Jesus name. Amen. Son, some trust in chariots and some in horses. But we will remember the name of the Lord our God. They are brought down and falling, but we are risen and stand upright. So the choir have told us, if you look up to God, the Bible said, looking up to God, unto Jesus, the author and finisher of our faith. What does it mean by the author and the finisher? Oh, it's the same thing as saying the Alpha Omega. The Alpha Omega is the beginning and the end. There is a particular song that a, a Yoruba musician or artist sang. What's up here? Oba Ibere. Oba Ahi. Oba Kinikon. But that song is not true. Oba Ahi. Oba Ahi. It's not. It's the Alpha Omega. When it's about Ahi, when it's about in between, God leaves you and the devil. Kejoma. Jaja. It is that is a period just like a teacher. It teaches you in class on the day of examination. If the teacher shows forth again, that's my practice. If as a teacher, I will come and be giving you answers or giving you hints in the day of your examination, that's my practice. No. I believe last time I came here, everybody understood English very well in this, in this church. So I think we can still go like that. That come on, let it not be elongated. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. So once that teacher begins to try to maybe find a way to make to give the child the, the student maybe a sport or something, it shows two things. The teacher is, is does not have integrity. One. Number two, the teacher has not taught. And God or the Holy Spirit is not a teacher that will lead you without what teaching. So therefore, the period of teaching is the period of the Alpha at the beginning. It gives you the information. You begin to wonder, what happened? God saw in the garden while the serpent was having a dialogue with the woman and the husband was beside. But did God interfere? He would not interfere because of, it's the Alpha and Omega. If God interferes in that situation, God is a cheat. So most of us, in, after we receive instructions from God, or after we start a journey with God, we are expecting God to continue to speak and speak to guide us all through the way. God, God gives you a module from the beginning and expect you to work it out. Remember Paul said, work out your salvation. I expect you to work it out. When you get to the end, he will now come and say, well done, my son. A, a practical example, Jesus Christ, he, he was taken to the wilderness by the Spirit of God. And I wondered, the angels were present and he was being tempted by the devil. Or don't you know that? The angels were there. They were like spectators watching. So during that period of your examination, your display, God is a spectator. He would not say, he would not, he would not. Even if the love is too much, it may just, by signs of your territory, or your atmosphere, give you hints, not to miss your way, but that it will begin to speak and guide you. <laughs> because he, is, he has trained you to learn to be patient, to persevere, to have long-suffering. So what is the essence of long-suffering if in between God is coming to speak? Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I don't know if you are with me. Most of you, you pray unto God, and God tells you, I will do this, I will do that. And but that thing is not coming out how it will look like. Then you begin to find there's a particular person in my church. He had a particular dream. And he said he wants to, God told him some things in the dream. But some things was not happening, coming forth. And he came to me and said, ah, Sir, this, well, this is what is happening. And I now told him, Should I go and tear the mouth of God? Say, yeah, I should not open the mouth of God for God to speak. <laughs> I will not do that. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Is the Alpha Omega. So after Satan finished the three temptations and Jesus scaled through fast, what happened? The Bible said the angels now came and ministered unto Jesus. Have you seen that in the Bible? Are you sure? Or should we read? Should we? Let's go. Let's go to the Bible. 
which of the account have it? Let's check the account of, um, is it Matthew or Luke? But let's, let me, let's go to Matthew first. To see the account of the temptation of Jesus Christ. Matthew chapter 4. Are we there? At the last temptation, verse 10. Yes. Just say, get behind Satan. For it is written, Thou shalt worship the Lord thy God, and him only shall thou serve. Then the devil liberty. him. Yes. And behold, angels came and ministered unto him. After he has finished with the devil. How was then the angels now what? Ministered unto him. And that is the practice of God. When God gives you his word, he wants to watch how you will work that thing out in patience. Though God is an eternal personality, he has the ability, what he says is what he will do. But that what he says in your life will come to pass does not depend on God. It depends on you. God cannot lie. If God says you become the president, the only person that can prevent you from being the president is you. Because God is only Alpha and Omega. God has told you, you become the president. Or God, let's just say you become the president. Why did God say that thing? It is that you may have understanding to run in that purpose. Why did the vision come? Is that not uh, uh, um, Habakkuk chapter 2? Let's see that. Habakkuk chapter 2. Why did the vision came? It came for a purpose. Habakkuk 2 from verse 1. Eh? I will stand upon my watch. Okay, go to verse 2. Verse 2 quickly. The Lord answered me and said, Write the vision. The prophet told you that Omo Emi, Iyanjo, Owa Niwajo, meaning maybe maybe you travel about or not. Why did they say so? Not because God will just for one day as magic. You just see yourself there. Uh -uh. They are telling you for a purpose. Write the vision down. Talk to me. Who is there? And make, it make it plain upon the tables. Here yeah, you will see the devil and say, God has said this thing about your hand. For the purpose of you running. Running. They told you so that you run. They said you become the president. I think it is not for you to begin to work it out. Oh, are you with me? Have understanding of what I'm saying. God said you will be the president. God will do it in his own ways. But you have to run. What is the way you run? You begin to look for maybe political party by his instruction to join. You can't become the president without belonging to any political party. Are you with me? You just sat in your house. God said I'll become the president. And you are waiting. And you will wait till you are 105 years old. That will not come to pass. Your child will still later become the president. Or even your children's children. Because God spoke that thing. Whenever God speaks a thing, he speaks it onto the bloodline. So if he fails in you, it should not fail in the child. If he fails in the child, the children's children is there. So it continues in the, in the generation because God's word must come to pass. You are just a, a system that will perish. God's word is eternal. I told some people yesterday that when God speaks a word, God is not, God, God does not have yesterday, today, and tomorrow. It is only we because we are guided by the sun and the moon. That's why our day changes. In God, there is permanent light evermore. So therefore, God is in an eternal today. Are you with me? This same day we are operating, you see the same day God operated with Abraham. In God, the day is still one. Are you with me? Yeah. So when God speaks a thing, if you die, you go. That word is still what? Inactive. As long as your bloodline remains. As long as your bloodline remains. If you, if you all know that your errors, it may not come to pass in your lifetime. It, let, let's, let's not go to, to that direction. Are you with me? So when God say a thing for you, God is the Alpha. He has eternal power to work it out because he's the Alpha Omega, I mean the beginning and the end. In between the journey, God leaves you to display that which you have learned. It's a period for you to exhibit, to show that yes, you are a worthy student. So in between that journey, you and the devil, you begin to contend. So therefore, all you need to contend with the devil, everything is given to you. Every Sunday, we, you preach, you read the Bible, so that you understand the wise 
of the devil. God did not take the devil out for a reason. Go Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Let's go into the lesson. We'll see some things in that lesson. Isaiah 31, Abby. Let's see. Yes. 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 Woe to them that go to where? To Egypt. What I pay ethical lesson to show you, Abby. Abby? Oh, work. That's good. That's a, a good one. I do not even know that pay oh, work below lesson. That's wonderful. He says, Woe to them that go down to Egypt for help. For help. And say yes. And yes. Because they are many. Uh -huh. And in Ottoman, because they are very strong. Yes. But they look not unto the Holy One of Israel. Hold on there. Woe to them that go down to Egypt. But did not look unto the Holy One of Israel. Two journey. The journey from Egypt. To Israel and the journey from Israel to Egypt. Coming from Egypt to Israel, salvation, redemption. Israel to Egypt. God said, Woe unto them that goes down. Two so things. This same thing happened. God and Jesus Christ narrated the story in the Bible, the story of the Good Samaritan. He was coming from where? From Jerusalem to Jericho. And because Jerusalem is a city set upon the hills. Jericho on the plain. So they know that as much as you are coming from the hill, there is an abundance with you. So therefore, coming down to the plain, which is Jericho, he was robbed on the way and was brutally uh, 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 dismembered or something like that. Until a good Samaritan came and took him to the hospital and there about. So it's a journey of woe coming from the hill or the mountain of the Lord to what? To the plain. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. So those that came from Egypt, they go down. If, thank God, I love how the Bible says they go down to Egypt. Meaning they are coming from a high place and they are going down to you say woe unto them because the high place is the place of the God of Israel. Are we together here? And God said, Woe unto them because they seek help. Why were they going down? It's what you said in the song. They thought that God is slack. They thought that God would not answer them. They thought that we could get the best in Egypt, but they never waited. They never knew that God is only Alpha Omega. Many of us we are like that. I told some people that if you are in a in a haste with God. I said, your need will in, in you turn to a want, and your want will bring you to emptiness. If you operate by your wants, it will bring you into emptiness. But if you operate by your need, it will bring you to accomplishment, to, to perfection. I don't know if you get what I'm saying. Your wants is those things that you felt you need, that is needed for your life. Whereas your need are those things that God knows, that yes, this is what is according to the books for your purpose. Oh, you want a car. That is a want. Your need. God knows it's an okada. That is your need. But you want a car. Beautifully. Your desire can make you get that car. But that car will bring you to emptiness. That car can be what will even kill you. Because why? It is not a need in the purpose. It is a want. So therefore, when many of, many of us are wants, because whenever we pray unto God for some things, God understood. But God will never submit himself to what we want, but what is needed for the purpose of our existence because he is the one that has the manual of our life. So therefore, you are in a haste. You are in a haste. I have prayed to God. Someone told me that, that he is always weary coming to the presence of God because if we pray and pray and pray and nothing is happening. I said all the years that God has been calling you to come, you did not answer God. So God is paying you back. God has been shouting, repent. Holy oh, Spirit will shout every day. You tell that. Maybe you just one month, just like, let me let me change. And you pray for one month and some, nothing is happening in your life. Begin to say, mm, there is no God. God has been calling you since you were born. You are 18 years. You are 20 years. Oh, she in Deshe. And you now turn for maybe one or, 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 or six months. And you are expecting that, yes, now that I've turned, God should now, God will watch you also for 20 years. If you don't know God, He will watch you. Let me know if this person truly has turned to me. 
and will begin to watch you. In that period of watching you, he will not even talk in your situation. He will be watching you. 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 But if you are able to scale through that period, then it shows up as the omega. of your God is not alpha and omega for everybody. It can be the alpha and you may decide to make Satan your omega. By your word, in patience and not being able to persevere in the journey. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. We are in Isaiah 31. We have said, go to them that go down to Egypt. Let's be fast. Let's go to um, verse 4. Let's read from verse 4 now. The Lord has spoken. Like a lion. Uh -huh. Mm-hmm. Shepherds. Yes. Yes. Abase himself for the noise of them. The Lord of hosts will do what? We come down to fight for Mount Zion and for the ill thereof. Let me just explain. God will come down to fight for Mount Zion and for the ill thereof. What a wonderful statement. He will come down to fight for Mount Zion and for the ill thereof. If God will fight for Mount Zion and the ill, now, two places here is mentioned here. That is the mountains and the hills. God will come down to fight for Mount Zion and for the hills. What that is telling us is this. God will not fight for those that are on the plain. Geography, you know what is a plain? Or well, let me just say, the, let me put it as, I don't know that, the, the, the eggs. Only those that are on the hill and on the mountain. That God is interested to fight for. Then this lesson should teach us how do we then approach the hill and the mountain? Because it will come down to where? To the hill and the mountain to fight for them there. So therefore, those that are on the plain, what is happening to them? The plain is giving. We are struggling with yourself. But those that are on the hill are on, and on the mountain, God said is going to what? To fight for them. Oh, no wonder. Is it David? Yes. In the book of Psalms. Uh, um, is it Psalms 121? Look at the first verse for me. Look at the first verse. Nobody is there. I will lift up my eyes unto the hill from whence cometh my help. That's okay. I will lift up my eyes to where? To the hills from whence cometh my help. My help cometh from the Lord. That is, that is, there is something about the hill and the mountain that God chose in Himself that it is only those that come cometh unto the hill or to the mountain that they will fight for. That is where you get your help. Are you weary? Are you tired? Are you are you saying God has not answered your prayer? Check properly, you are not on the hill or the mountain. Because God will not attend. So whoever does not find himself or find his way onto the hill and onto the mountain. David said, I will lift up my eyes to the hill. Where does my help come from? There's something we usually read in Psalm 72. He says that, and there shall be an handful of corn upon the earth. Now said the fruit, and upon the mount, the fruit thereof shall shake like Lebanon. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Are we following there shall be an handful of corn. An handful of corn upon the earth is a, is a symbol of, of, of blessings upon the earth. But there is something much more than that, that that verse was telling us that we didn't put our eyes upon. He said there shall be an handful of corn upon the earth. That handful of corn is what we sustain the earth. But upon the mountain, he said the fruits shall shake like Lebanon. On the mountain, there is abundance. Because on the mountain, no erosion will happen there. No thief will come there. In the highway there, there is no death. The food upon the earth, there shall be an a handful of corn. Maybe. Yes. Upon the top of the mountain, what will happen there? The food thereof shall shake like Lebanon. I guess when the, when the food is shaking, you know what is happening? It is, it, it is falling down. And everybody on the mountain on the hill at that time is what is getting abundance. There is no struggle on the mountain. They are struggling in life because you have not climbed the mountain. When I mean mountain, I do not mean Olu Morocco. He's a critical so he wants to speak man, so we okay. That's not what I'm saying. It's entirely different. You may see it in that perspective. Right, that's your home. But that's not what I'm saying. 
Not that you begin to find mountain and you say, I just to church play. Uncle put his up and pray, let's go to the hill and the mountain. Uh -uh. In fact, that is why the church is set upon a hill. Everyone say, I need step to go to the okay. So you have a mountain here, yeah, a hill. But are you, are you on the mountain? Some people will be on the mountain and descend from the mountain. You will come to the mountain. It's, a foolish, it's foolishness. How can you go to the top of the mountain where there is abundance? And you receive everything that the mountain could give to you and you brought it to the hill. And you brought it to the plain. On the plain, there is struggling. Because why? on the plain, there is an handful of corn. So everybody is battling for that handful of corn upon the earth. You are struggling for that corn. This is struggling for that corn because it's an handful of corn on the earth. So therefore, on the plains, as long as you remain on the plain with everyone, you'll be given to struggle. Oh, David also said, Who shall ascend unto the hill of the Lord? Or who shall stand in his holy place? Look at the criteria for you to come to the hill of the Lord. Because here, they went down to Egypt and God said, Woe unto them. God, he said, they have forsaken, they should have come to the hill of the Lord. Those that came to the hill are those that I will fight for. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I begin to ask yourself, before you begin to pray that, are you on the hills or the mountain? Say, it's not that you're on the plain ground. You're on the plain ground. What the children of the world are doing, you are also, inter you are also with, what is the difference? And you, and you are saying God did not answer you. We see, we see you in club. We see them in club. We see you with worldly music. We see them with, so what? You are intertwined with the world. One I don't know that song very well. That friendship with the world is enmity with God. And God will rain fire upon those. Because on the mount of God, it's only got a release of fire. That's, that lesson has it. Are you getting what I'm saying? The hills and the mountain. Where are you? Before I begin to say this, because we are quick to leave God and begin to, to, to look for man to help us, like the song of the choir. When you begin to search for man, it says, show that you are not on the hill or the mountain. You are on the plain ground. And one, two, uh, I'm here, one Anglican. One, they sang one song. Uh, I don't know the English one very well. But one in Modugole, Christian Patabi, Ilemiron, Iyori. Look at that song. I love that song. He said, and he said, On Christ the solid rock I stand, all other ground is sinking sand. They didn't say only the sand at the area of the canal or or swampy area. They said any other ground you are standing on is what? Sinking. It's sinking. The only sure place is what? The, the rock of Christ. Selectus of faith is the wa do no me apata. Opewa, opewa, kadu wolo yakata. Enito, enito, kadu wolo yakata. Yuri, yuri, kristi ni eni. Hallelujah. Let us see, please. That will not take too much time. So if Christ calls you to come upon that rock, do you think it's a, it's a small matter? Because he knows that if they eventually do anything for you on the plane, if they do anything for you on the plane, that thing will be lost. Agent of denudation, erosion, can come on the plane and take whatever is given to you. And that's why, because God knows that, he said, come to the mountain, come to the heat. Isaiah 59, he said, when the enemy shall, shall come in, that's 59, 19, when the enemy shall come in like a flood, what will he do? He will raise a standard against them, meaning you are taking above the plane so that whatever flood, obviously, you saw what happened when the dragon released water out of his mouth to consume the baby. The baby was taking what? Was taking away to heaven. When the enemy comes in like a flood, the Lord will what? Raise a standard. You want to read? They shall fear the name of the Lord. Yes. And glory from the reason of the Lord. Yes. When the enemy shall come in like a flood. When he comes in like a flood. The spirit of the Lord shall be come. Now, what, listen to me now. Good. When the enemy comes in like a flood. 
and you are on the plane, you will be swept. You will be swept off by the flood of the enemies. It is only those that are on the hill, on the mountain, that will be saved. Even the ark of God had to go and rest upon the mount of Ararat. The, sorry, the ark of uh, Noah. Noah's ark had to go and rest upon the mount of Ararat. No wonder, Obadiah chapter 2, chapter 2, is it verse 17? No, 1, Obadiah chapter 1, verse 17 said, uh, 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 Upon Mount Zion, read for me. Upon Mount Zion, uh -huh. there shall be deliverance and holiness. That is where you possess your possession because it's upon the mount, upon the mount, upon the mount. There shall be deliverance and holiness, not on the plain. On the plain, there is, the plain is too noisy, noisome pestilence all over the place. But upon the mount, there shall be deliverance and there shall be holiness. Then you shall possess your possession. Whatever they give you on the plane, the idol of your house will steal it from you. Oh, you don't know your house have an idol. The idol of your house, the beast that rules, that regulates the activities of your house, will steal it from you. As long as you, you decide, most of us we are here now, you don't know if you want to follow God or not. You don't know, let's go to church. That's some of us. It's very dangerous. It's very dangerous. He said that you want to hold this God and hold him family, or you go and hold the devil. The one you are doing, oh, they don't, you don't even know where you are. It's like it's a, you, are, you are playing with fire because you are an enemy of God and enemy of Satan. You are not holding God family, you are not holding Satan. You are just in between. Remember that lukewarmness. God, Jesus said, What? I'll spill you out of my mouth. And because the beast of your house, the beast of your family, every family, whether you like it or not, was rooted in idolatry. As far as you are an African, go and praise the genealogy of your family to generations back. They were idol worshippers. When the Christianity come, they were all what idol worshippers. So there is a covenant that runs in your family. So because of that covenant that runs in your family, a beast or an, an image is associated with an altar in your family, which regulates your activities, your life. And they begin to say, if everybody in your house, nobody will get married except uh, women, who, except they are 38 years. And that thing is consistent. If you are not up to 38 years, no marriage. Okay, even if they want to give birth, there's only one child. And that thing is going on. It shows there is an idol that is regulating the activities of your house. And when that idol says that this one is trying to, to, to go to the highway, because you know that the highway, they cannot come there. Because it's on the on the what on the hill and the mountain. They can't get there. It's not this place, so it should be a dear one church. It's not the church. Celestial church is a complete church. If that have a chessy, you might have to wallet on one to sort of waka law so do because it's on the hill. This is not where the worship is. He want to do what we buy. He want at your jet at your show. I don't match this. You know, you did not meet your grandma. Oh, oh, let's see. You better go out. You better go home because that worship you will worship with the devil. Yes, because when your jet will they walk on no one you do less it. Oh, what the day I want You, that you mind. The reason you did not come to church early. Ah, don't think I might not come early. You that motivate our vehicle will not get here on time. We branch for good. He said, let's go and bow down in the nearby church. That would be a church, we sure. Because we must, it was not possible that we miss Yama because it just come me money. So the moment we are doing the worship here, everywhere we all assemble in one boat, in one ark, in one ship, worshiping there. We are done 10 o'clock till you oh, one Then you came to church. Just know that you cannot ascend the hill anymore. Because why? You are giving yourself unto what vanity. Remember that psalm. He said, Who shall ascend into the hill of the Lord? 
or who shall stand in his holy place? He that has a clean heart and a pure heart, who have not lifted up his soul unto vanity. That thing that kept you from meeting church by 10 a.m. is vanity, so you can't come to the hill. You are the issue. Okay, and you know the man says in B, that is after service. You are waiting outside for fight. Let me see. Of a complete shop, you got a so long as you almost say you are not on the hill. You, are, you, are, you, can't, you can't be on the hill, and, and those things will break you. You can't be, it's not possible. You are on the plane. That is why you could be offended in a service. If you, if you are on the hill, where the blinding light of Jesus is shining upon you. Uh -uh. A, 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 a light that overwhelms, and you are saying that let me see if I do what to really about our lesson. What what is it? you are worshiping with Satan? Hallelujah! 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 Hallelujah. We are still reading, so let us go to the second lesson quickly. No, 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 we are still on Isaiah 31. Look at verse, look at verse seven, verse 7 for me. Every man shall cast away his idol. Now, I told you something for that. Every man has an idol. Even Paul. Paul said, in, in, in that, in that uh, first Corinthians 15, he said, he fought with the beast at Ephesus. He fought with the beast at Ephesus. But you are not ready to fight with the beast of your house, of your idol. You are not ready to cast away that idol, that beast. You cannot look at if, look, look at the next one. Let's read that verse and see. He said, For in that day every man shall cast away his idols of silver and his idols of gold, which your hands have made unto you for a sin. The next verse. After you have casted that image out, that beast out, what will happen? Then shall the Assyrian fall. With the sword, you want things to fall in your life, you have to cast out that beast. I told you, just and that Paul said in first Corinthians that he fought with the beast at Ephesus. Do you think it was an ordinary beast? Paul went to Ephesians, Ephesus and he was preaching against a god that they an idol that they directed there, they called the idol the goddess Diana. And Paul told them that this is ordinary God, that there's nothing this, this is your hand made it. And Demeritus, which was the chief craftsman, was angry that Paul could stop his game because he's the one on on to go on every household in Ephesus and in all Asia. Even the Bible says all over the world they have a, a an image dedicated to the goddess Diana. And Paul went to confront and said no. And that was where he encountered the beast of Ephesus. And he said, "I fought with the beast in Ephesus." Oh, so that was it. He said, after the man of men, I fought with the beast at Ephesus. Beast off at the art. Kilo and bear, off or art? Off. That means there's a beast of your family. Because as much as you want the enlightening of God that comes from the true word of God comes to you, they know that that thing will liberate you out. So therefore, they will release the beast. They will release the beast. So that the beast will still whatever is given to you. No wonder wisdom will cry. Is that not Proverbs uh, chapter 6 or chapter 8? Eh? Proverbs chapter 6. Look at the first verse. Yes, Proverbs chapter 6. The first verse. What is there? Eh? Eh? Go to verse chapter 8. Are you okay? Verse 1. Proverbs chapter 8, verse 1. Doth not wisdom cry? Yes. Uh -huh. Yes. 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 Uh -huh. Yes. 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 That's not what I'm looking. Look at Proverbs chapter 9. Wisdom had healed her house. Yes. She had killed her seven pillars. Look at the first pillar. She had killed her beast. She had killed her beast. Hold on. Wisdom had killed her beast. That's the first pillar. The second one. 
she had mingled her wine. Many of us want to mingle the wine before we kill the beast. If you mingle your wine, if you make success, if you gather wealth, whatever you gather, without killing your beast, if the beast will kick it off, you will come to emptiness. That's why they were telling them in that first session that they will cast your idols. Cast away that golden image. Cast them off. When you cast them off, the Assyrians will fall. Wisdom is speaking here. He said what? I have killed my beast. Paul also told us that I fought with the beast at Ephesus. If you look at, if you want to see that account, if you look at Acts 19, Paul was explaining what happened at Ephesus. He explained in details that it was because he spoke against the goddess Diana. That was why they revolted against him. And it was at that Ephesus he fought the beast. Because he was trying to bring enlightenment. You are coming to church because you want to be enlightened. You want to know more of God. Have you killed your beast? Because your beast will come at you. If you try to mingle, look at the order. Wisdom said she had killed her beast. Then she moved on to what? Mingled her wine and set her table. For you, you want to set your table. You want success quickly. You want success and you don't fought the battle of the of altars in your family. You, will, you make all those words and you commit it to strangers. Is that not Proverbs 6? He said, your, you will labor and your labor will be in the house of, of, the, of the Proverbs chapter 5. Look, look, look at from verse 8. Remove thy way from her. That beast, remove your way from her. It can be a, a, a woman of adultery. It can be a, a seductive man. The Bible says, remove your way from that woman, that beast. Uh -huh. Yes, if you don't go away from that, what will happen? You will give your honor unto that. All the honor will go in to Everything you gather to yourself. I mean, it can He said, you will give it unto what others. Talk to me. Your years will be given to the queer. What a, what a waste. Your years given to the queer. Just because you couldn't kill your beast. You couldn't summon the idols of your house. You couldn't bring the idols of your house to their knees. They are asking for blessing. The idols of your eyes are standing. Once you see that blessing, they will share it. So, what is bad? Why not to long? They, they are the ones that we write because they are the ones regulating your life they have the order of your life so they will regulate okay he has received this in okay uh we'll take 40 percent and give to this we'll take and at the end of the day you'll be left with nothing look at it again read talk to me Let's strangers will be filled with your wealth they will scatter your wealth your labors in the house of a stranger. Talk to me. You will mourn, and we will not mourn in the name of Jesus Christ. When your flesh and your body is consumed, now begin to look. Ah, Look at me now, now 50 years. Ah, your flesh and body is consumed. Yet there is nothing to show for it. You will mourn, but we will not mourn in the name of Jesus. Why won't you mourn? Listen to the next verse. Talk to me, Auntie. Yes, you have because you have hated instruction. God has, as I'm instructing you now, that it is for you to come to the hill and come to the mountain. But you will not put your ear down to follow. You have hated instruction. Hating instruction will cause you to mourn. Talk to me. And my heart defies the fool. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Jesus Christ said, that If I tell you a thing, go to the top of the mountain and shout. Why did he say, uh, a city set upon the hill cannot be hidden because that is your place. In my father's house, there are many mansions. I go prepare a place. Oh, 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 you are not for the place. So set your affection on the things above because you came from above. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Are we getting what I'm saying? Yes, sir. I don't need to say Bible class. I've told you that you should ask me how do we then come to the hill? How do we come to the mountain? See, that's what we are talking about. How do we? Is it by coming to church? Is it just by worshiping? Is it by how do we come to the hill? How do we? We have that. We have an answer in, also in Isaiah. Isaiah chapter 40. So oh, that's it. That today I'm going to the second lesson. Isaiah chapter 40. Isaiah 40. No, let's read from 
from 28. As thou not known, is it out that is in your Bible? Which version? KJV. Okay, read. Uh huh. Yes. 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 The creator of the ends of the earth. He does not faint. Yes. Thank you. Go ahead. Yes. Good. Yes. Yes. This is where we are going. They that wait upon the Lord shall renew their strength. They shall mount up with wings. That means you need wings to fly. To go to the mount, isn't it? Okay. You, your leg needs to be with uh, David, we call it, he gave me hind legs, meaning to become swift. Like Elijah could overtake the chariot of, of uh, onto Jezreel, the chariot of Ahab. To have that swiftness in your leg. That means you need wings, you need swiftness in your legs. Talk to me. And the chariot, and not wings. Yes. And the chariot, and not wings. You need to overcome fainting weakness, and you shall walk and not faint. Three things that you need before you can come to the heat of the mountain. You need the legs to walk. You need the, 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 the hind legs to run swift. Then you need the wings to fly. Hallelujah. And they said, those that wait on the Lord are those that what these three things will be given to. Because we need to, if you see an aeroplane, before it, it flies higher, it first the first time moves in, moving, the legs to move, and before you know, the hind leg for swift movement, and before you know, to fly. So every man that we approach the hill or the mountain of the Lord must possess these three things, and the three things can, will be given to you in the place of waiting on the Lord. The legs to walk, the hind legs to be swift, to run, and the wings to fly. Now, how do we? Jesus called it. Jesus looked in wow, yada te te yama bo. This is the first step. If you are coming to church, is the first step. God called you. Wow, can Lord? He called you and you came. You add and you came. That means it is the call, the voice of the Lord that is the beginning. When God says, "Eh, eh, eh, Marco, if he not reject not the call. So he called you to come. So once he calls you, the first thing he gives to you, he gives you legs to walk, to come. Are you with me? Just like you tell them, rise up and walk because he has given them legs. He cannot tell you come if he has given you no legs. Oh, come to the waters, Isaiah 55. Come and drink. Come, he has given you legs. The call of God gives you legs to move. So when God calls you and you are still dead, you are, you are a fool, you are an idiot. The, calls of, the call of God gives you leg, which is the first, first phase. And now you have the leg, you walk, you came down to the place of worship, to the place of God. You are tasty. You have Isaiah 55. You, have, you must come and buy. What of it? Ewara, Ewara, What of it? Ewaje, But firstly, you must seek Him. Seeking to work, coming, there shall be no loud to the Jesus. That's why you're feeling me less in love. So, if you can't come for Wednesday service, come for Friday service, come for what night service, you have to start walking with God. Oh, it's better because that's the first step. Because he says, Forsake not the gathering of the brethren, where two or three are gathered in my name, I am there. Where will you find Jesus? Here. So the first step is what? Your punctuality and your attendance to service. Regardless. I told some I told people that the system of the world is organized in such a way that it will steal your time and your life. So you begin to tell yourself, you come back from work. Oh, even at your homes. Many of us go. So you've not started working. 
Sources of running and flying to the hill. Hallelujah. 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 Now, when you start walking, heeding the call, coming for worship, not coming for worship because if I don't come, only shall we talk. Or if I don't want to, don't come because there's a responsibility you have to do. Maybe you are the one that need to own generator, or you are the one that need to. Don't come because there's a responsibility. You will become weary if that is why you are coming. You will become weary. If you come because there's a responsibility you must do in church, that will wear you out. You remember the, the Bible said, the zeal of your house has done what? Eating me up. If you come because of there's a permanent assignment, <clears throat> you will be weary. But if you come because there's someone that called you, you will be able to wait. Because if, if somebody calls you until you see that person, you know, go go now. Abi, somebody say, come and collect four million. I didn't know the house, but you went to his house. You don't, you, they're not born you where you go sit down and wait. You go sit down and wait. But if you don't say when they go in your house, you just want to go wash plates. Even if you know their hand, you wash plates and you what? You will go. That's the assignment you came to do. You just know that I, I come to wash cake. Or if I'm not the barber, if I'm not in the choir, if I'm not, you do that assignment and go. You don't encounter the person that owns the place. So, but because the person that calls you, is the one that wants to give you the 10 million. Even if you have not seen it, you will wait patiently. That kind of waiting, you cannot be waiting. You will wait till the person comes because you know that there is something you want to get from him. Are you coming because of the shepherd? Wa mofo, last, last. Wa mofo. If you come because of a reason, that there is something that makes nonsense. What should make you come to the person of God is because he called you. He is the one that called. And he's the one that is capable to quicken. That they said, if the spirit that is that not second, uh, first Corinthians is it eight? That the spirit that that uh, wake Jesus from the dead, if it was is in you, it will it will quicken your mortal body because it's the one you came to look for. So you quicken your mortal body, there will be no weariness in your body, and that's the first step, walking. The second step is what I've said before. Multiply one. Hallelujah. I'm happy no. I'll be man for. I never even read the second lesson. But the second lesson, I to join a God, no problem. The second step is what we have said in that uh, 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 Abba Book chapter 2 that says, write down the vision. Write it and make it plain on the table so that it will enable you to what? To run. So now that means the voice of God gives you legs to walk. The vision of your life gives you the hind legs wrong are you following me what vision what have god told you about your life god said you become a pastor and yet you don't even read bible that means you are not running in the vision you don't read the bible you just say alone look for every master no problem one day the holy spirit will make you talk nonsense we will make you talk nonsense Let's not go into that direction, Jerry. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. The Bible says, write down the vision of your life so that when you turn your pages, everybody should have the book of your dreams. So, Lala, as you dream in the night, you wake up in the morning, put it down. When you write it down, take that book to the place of prayer. Lord, maybe your 9 p.m. prayer, after the day activities, before you sleep. Lord, this is the dream. Or morning 6 a.m. prayers. I dreamt like this, like this. I saw myself healing the sick. Raising the dead. I saw this. That means there's a plan for you to release the power of healing upon me. The moment you are reading that thing in the presence of God, there's a registration for that thing. Nobody honors what is not written in heaven. Not nobody honors it. They don't, it's not of what you want to. Are you that eloquent than Satan? What are you do you want to be eloquent about? It, they honor what is written because as far as the heaven is concerned, it's ways are judgments. So judgment is about what the books. As I just already said, the serpent that it is written. Write down the vision. Don't just dream and say, in my head. Write it down. Add a book. Add a book. Write it down. That book always takes you to the place of prayer. When you take it, read it before God. I dreamt about this thing. So, the consciousness of that thing, a day of remembrance will come. The angels will take that book and go and read it before the presence of God and said, So, so, and so, so did. Sister Temitope dreamt about this. Father, or king of glory, king of light. What are we to do as such a matter? And they look at it. Okay, what is his current situation? Oh, he's in the is is in APC party. Oh, and we said he will become the governor. Okay, what we we'll do? Oh, yeah, Michael, Gabriel, and they send them. 
That APC party that you are, before you go, one thing I want to happen, you be, they will say, okay, come and contest for primary. Are you following me? Because you had the vision and you are running in the line. Not that the vision is in one place and you are in the other place. So the voice of God gives you your legs to walk in the path. The vision of your life keeps you what? Running. Now, in running, when you are consistent, running in that vision of your life, then God gives you wings. That is when he comes in to give you wings to fly. That is his assignment in everything. It, when, once you are consistent in the running of that vision of your life that you are putting, it gives you wings to fly, and you fly to the mountain where you are, you meet abundance. There will be no shortage. There will be no, no lack. Hallelujah. 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 In the book of John, that was the second lesson, he was trying to establish the same thing I will be talking about. Let us see one or two verse. Uh -huh. Yes. Yes. Mm -hmm. Yes. Yes. Now, this, this John is showing us a, 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 a contrast. We are coming to the hill and the mountain to meet someone. Are you with me? In the New Testament, that person we are going to meet came down to meet us in order to help us to go back to him. In Adjokan, the Titan, in Celestial Church, in here. In the Old Testament, the way it was shown to us that we must run who shall ascend to the hill of the Lord. Are you with me? Celestial Church. God made it easy. He sent himself down to come and take us. So therefore, oh my God, what a good place we have in this church. It, that is what John was telling us. That that was the module of God that we, we walk run and fly. But Jesus Christ came down. The world was made flesh and dwelt among us so that it will take us because in him was life and that life, the light of men, that it may take us. He said, if I be lifted up, what will happen? I will draw all men. He was uh -huh. And the light was the light of men. Let's leave that. Are you with me? That was the what second lesson he sent to establish. That when Jesus came down, in order to cut short the processes. So you know this thing I'm talking. Write down the vision, work and everything. So about you need Jesus to take a shortcut here. Because he's the one. No they said in John 14, Philip was asking Jesus, show us the Father. He said, Ah, I have been with you since you don't know the Father. He said, I am the way. Uh, I am the way, the truth, and the life. Uh, that hill you are going to the place of the Father. Nobody comes there except through me. So he made himself available. We sang one song during the service. said, e wano tito te mi la si le. Is that what we sang? Uh, no, I said the other one. Oh, oh no, same word, Isha. That is the way. So instead of walking, running, flying, one person summarized all the modus in the second and said, he has come to be flesh, to dwell amongst you. So all you do is accept him. Let the life of Jesus dwell in you. So, uh, okay. Uh -huh. Yes. Full of, grace and Full of grace and truth. Full of grace and truth. Do you know grace? The ability of God on the sons of on the sons. So this one came. Full of grace and truth, in order that to give you the ability of God, instead of walking and running to flying, he said, "From from from bed you can fly, because you have Jesus." Are you ready to receive that Jesus? Are you sure? If you don't want to receive Him, you will be given to struggle. Look at it. You'll be walking, you'll be running, you'll be flying. Because some of you gone, you cannot even. I know the dream to say one must see the vision of your life. How do you know the vision of your life? Shortcuts don't they? Just allow the life of Jesus in you. Are you ready to receive that life that Jesus wants to give to you? 
That's the basis of what we are saying today. The beast of your family, you want to fight the beast of your family. Run to me, say, let's talk to Lack, Jagu, Shedmo, Teo, Fawa, Mojomi, Mola, Tongwa, Maberu, Maber. So instead of you fighting the beast like Paul, Paul, that this is Ask Jesus, and he is the commandant of the chief of the armed forces in heaven. All you need to do is dispatch. Dispatch angels. So therefore, you will not be given to stress. You will be living stress. Have you ever seen, you see Billy was shopper, because Jesus came Papa. Look at his miracles. I used, to, I used to listen to some pastors a lot. And I see them. At the particular time, one wants to, he wants to heal a particular person that is dead in here. He, he begged God the church. Everybody begin to speak in tongues. Begin to speak in tongues. They spoke in tongues for like one hour. Because what? There's a deaf person they want to heal. Papa Oraye. And those people, they will fast and fast and fast and fast and fast and fast. I'm seeing you how Jesus Christ took away the stress away. Took the stress away from us celestials. Not because he wants us to be lazy. What because of our love? Okay, I know you like fasting a lot. A meal like you. Uh, oh, if fasting is good, though it keeps you light, it keeps you, you feel you are. Oh, that is good. It's good. But if the bridegroom, he draw me more pussy at your uncle, Yahoo, remember they asked Jesus, why is the disciples not fasting? He said, how can they fast when the bridegroom is with them? While he was with them, they never fasted. While he was with them. Now, Selem wants to have a Jesus to take us back to God. So, the ability of God, the grace of God is poured upon us. So, Papa can be sleeping and can use his leg to wake the dead body. I have not, I have not seen a man that have done that. I have not had. Even with Abara slap. The dead, and the dead body. Take it to Pentecostal churches. I, I, they, are, they are doing well. Are you with me? But take it to them, you will know. Somebody said he went for deliverance. And first of all, they said they should fast for seven days dry. They will not go home. They will be sleeping on the bare floor for deliverance. That is what they will just come to church and they will agree with They will just say, Our fair, Kolu, Bala, Legba, Wa, Unko, Ni, Pe, Mere, Kegbe, Unko, Ni, Baje, Shade, and that's all. And that's all. You want this stress or you want this, you know, the world, the way Jesus gave to us in Selef. You want, which one do you want? Stress or the way Jesus gave to us? The way Jesus gave to Selef? We want to pay Jesua, Mi, Moni, Christiwa, Mi, Moni. Therefore, you can see that Selah is personalizing their own Jesus. One of the Jesu, me money, money, Jesu, our Jesus. So you want that Jesus, one Maria to say, Jesu, ye, and me money, of him, and to have a sin, Jesu, I call In summary of our sermon today, Jesus is not the shortcut, but is the mode, the completeness. Of the way you want to take stress out of your life, see them find him. Find him. I love the life of Papa so much, and that's why anyway I talk about him. Somebody that I do miracle for fun. Miracle was a child's play, it was nothing. What people will, will go back and fast, drive fast and everything, it doesn't bother him. I know you know the story of Papa Berry, the Kolo Show will be telling us every day. I know that for sure. Many things, many that we have read, many that we saw. Many. It does not need oh cooking bower. I be a boy. Cooking bower. But there was there was this power that was oozing out of him at all times because Jesus is in him. He's our father. Also. So we ought we ought to we ought to be like him. Hallelujah. 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 We'll just pray one prayer now. Let's be on our feet. We'll just pray one prayer.